Welcome to another video from Dr. Locke. I get this question a lot, so I thought I might do a video on it. Video on it. Um, a lot of people have a sideboard, a, a desk, a set of drawers, a cupboard, or you name it, basically. Um, they've got an old piece of furniture, or a piece of furniture, most of it being old, and they say, I've lost the key. Um, if I send you a photo of the keyhole, can you tell me what key it's going to be? And that's kind of just like... Um, judging a book by its cover and no you're not going to know what happens in the book just by the keyhole so in other words when you're looking at the keyhole they can look very very similar uh, this is just one type of escutcheon and looking at that it tells me absolutely nothing it just tells me that a key fits in there so can you judge a key by the keyhole most of the time no doesn't work that way if it was that simple uh, people would be able to you know just basically look at it and make a key and come back and open it so no you can't you can't make a key just from a keyhole there is some things that you can do from the keyhole uh, now for starters if you see a, a, an old-fashioned one like this with a couple of nails in there and it's on a cupboard or a sideboard uh, sorry side table or whatever it is or desk or or glass cabinet chances are it'll be just a very low security type of key and chances are it'll have this type of lock on there here if it's an old-fashioned piece of antique or something of better quality, handmade, you know, like really well-made or expensive antique, it might actually have a brass lock on it like this. And there is a huge difference between this lock and this lock. So a lot of furniture in the 60s, 70s came out with just this lock on it, or even the 80s, and it takes this standard wardrobe key. Now this is available from our website. We call it the S1 key, and we also have it in a gold color too. I think we still have some of them left as well. So you can buy this key, and 90% of the time, if it's just a, you know, a cabinet or um, a very basic type, not, not high-end antique, most of the time this will work. So try that first. Uh, it's a standard key, just fits in, you turn it, locks and unlocks. Now looking at this one here, when you look at the keyhole and you, you know, you've got this on front, there is no real way of telling what's going on behind there. And if you had this of course going through a piece of wood, you're going to be looking through and there'd be no way of telling you know, what the difference is. So I'll tell you what the difference is here. This one here is just a, st uh, a standard key and there is no sort of security in the lock. The key is the security, and if it goes in and turns, you'll get it open. With this one here, this is actually a four lever Jackson handmade desk drawer lock. And what that means is there's four levers inside there, and the key actually has to manipulate those four levers to the right position to allow this bolt right here to slide from left to right, and then it will open. So your key will look something along the lines of this. This is not the correct key for it. This is just a, a Jackson key that I picked up that actually goes in and fits. So that creates a whole big problem. If you have this on your desk um, and it's locked, it's gonna be a big problem because a lot of people don't really muck around with these old keys anymore. Um, it can be done in the UK. They probably do it a lot more. In the US, they might do a lot more. In Australia, we don't do it that much anymore. And the labor it'll uh, take and for somebody to sort of get there with the right tools, um, you know, that, that's gonna be the challenge. So it might even cost you more than what the cabinet's worth, who knows? But definitely can be done, but nobody kind of has the tools anymore because not a lot of people use this type of lock. It's still made. It's definitely still made and still out there, and I can order new ones of these as well. But Jackson is in Tasmania, and they're still going strong, hand-making their locks. But the thing is that um, the tools, I wouldn't carry the tools. In all the workshops I've worked in, I've never seen or heard anybody talk about uh, picks for Jackson for lever desk locks. Maybe, you know, for some of their safe locks or, or other locks which are more common, but for a desk lock, no no one would that I know or have ever seen sort of has them but they would exist they wouldn't be anything um, you know it's not rocket science but it's just a rare thing that most people don't you know use a lot so that's why we don't have it so if you do have something like that best idea is take the lock out take a lock to a locksmith they can hand make a key hand making a key is not a huge process we basically find the right key blank we pull it apart we start cutting uh, all these grooves in the key to go with these levers right here and then um, once we've got them all to the correct height when you rotate it it'll allow the bolt to move so cutting any any qualified locksmith in Australia should be able to cut you a key to uh, this this one right here as far as picking it well a lot of people wouldn't take the job on because they don't have the tools it is quite easily done and you could any locksmith who was qualified in Australia would probably be able to do it have have they had the right tool um, but 
as far as you know not having the tool and getting it done that's that's a you know another story there's probably some um, shortcut people do or cut the bolt or all sorts of things but um, then you've got to find a replacement something like this you order from Tassie is going to take you probably about a month to two months to get one so it's not going to be the best idea that's why a lot of people won't take it on but if you can take it out of the door yeah just take it into your local locksmith don't take it to your key cutter in the in the supermarket they won't be able to do it, it has to say locksmith on the door and um, they actually have to be a real locksmith not a not one that um, hasn't done the training all right so let's just have a look here and let's crack it open and, and let's see what's inside so we need a screwdriver will that do or do we need a, a, a proper screwdriver i think we need a proper screwdriver ah look at this rusty one that's nasty all right, bear with me and I will get a screwdriver. Here's one. It might be cheap, but it will work. Let's get that out of the way. All right, so we've got two flat blades here, slightly rusted. Okay, it hasn't really been looked after, this lock. Okay, let's get them out of the way. Where's my little, little dish? There's my little dish. Pop that in there. Pop that in there. Okay, I'm just going to separate it. Okay, so there's my first plate there, all brass, very nice, and that's what we have. So we have a little bit of junk, junk in there, just a little bit of dust. That's our bolt. Now this bolt actually has a pin. It's um, a, sort of what they call a post. So they've drilled it, put a post in there, and then panned it over and linished it. You can tell on how this is all kind of done. These uh, levers, and I'll show you the levers. Let's take that out of the way. There's that post I was telling you about, if you can see that. What that post has to do is it has to, it's sitting here at the moment, and as these levers lift up, they're all different heights. When they're in the correct formation, they actually allow the post to move left to right. And the tip of the key is what is driving the post. Sorry, is it the tip? No, it'll be the, it's not the tip. It'll be here. So we would have our cuts here, and we would have a a driver part of the key which would actually fit into the bolt right about here and drive it up and drive it down if you can see that and these parts here would all be going to different heights so when uh, here's the most easiest example when you put that in there when you put the key blank in there see how the key is it's too big actually see how, you, how the key is making it move can you see that see that window at the back as you move it now the window is clear when it's at that height, this bolt right here, I'll put it in from the back, can slide backwards and forwards. When it's lower than that, that piece of brass in the middle will stop it from going forwards or backwards. As you can see, here I'll put some white paper behind it. See that? See how it's two squares? As I move the key up, it clears and it becomes one square, or one big rectangle. So that's basically what's involved in it. And um, yeah, I mean, it's, oh, we've got a broken lever there too now. A broken lever i'll have to repair that these little pieces right here these are the levers and they're actually spring loaded so this one here being broken means that um can, can be repaired but you know that's if i'm going to go to the trouble of making a key and all the rest because it's not out of a desk it's just one that's come across the bench okay so this little um bit of metal here i guess i could sacrifice one they're not worth uh, uh, they're not worth much let's just prize this case off and have a look at what the difference is okay so there's the case it, it's high quality I know okay so that's what's inside of it basically um, here's your bolt section here okay so anything could pretty much lift that up you don't need much Let's see if I can oh, sorry see if I can simulate it which way are we we're here here there we go just got to push that up into the into the slots of the lock okay so that's what it looks like without the case on the front so when a key actually goes in, it pushes that spring-loaded sort of lever, you could say, at the back. So that spring-loaded lever lifts up. The key goes into that um, like uh, upside-down V section right there. And as you turn the key, it pushes the bolt forward. And then it springs back down into the section here, preventing the bolt from going backwards. And we could do it in reverse, and it'd do the exact same thing on the other side. So it's the same principle, by all rights. Um, you know, you've got the same sort of principle, one driving this way and this way. As we, when the key goes through, it basically lifts it from one and drops it into the other. So you could overlift it, and there'd be no trouble. As with this one right here, you actually have to lift it up to that specific amount, that specific height, 
and all four heights at the same time otherwise you're not going to get it so yeah there is a lot more challenging um sorry it's a lot more challenging with the with the levers in there when they say a two lever lock it's only got two of these so it's less challenging four levers more challenging six seven levers more challenging so that's 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 what's in it that's what it's all about um, leave your comments down below and um, if you've got an old desk drawer i don't want to know about it thanks for watching